Hello again, happy brainers, and welcome to more of your introduction to the first part of your happy brain training. And today I'd like to introduce you to um, an idea that your brain could be a model. So my question to you is, what if you could jump inside your brain as if it was a 3D model? I wonder what you would see or hear or smell or taste that would let you know you were right inside there. And of course, we can't ever do that. But building models inside our minds is a really great way to help us to understand what's happening inside our brains and the brains of others. So what I have for you is a model, a way of describing the brain that I learned many years ago from a really cool educational psychologist. And this is what she taught me. Imagine this is your brain. Clearly it's not your brain, but just imagine. And did you know that inside your brain, you have billions of little nerve cells that we call neurons? And there are billions of them and we're born with them. And when we're born, we have a few simple actions that connect the neurons together. And by that, what I mean is, we have some natural movements that make uh, chemistry and electricity fire off inside our brains. And we call those neural pathways that begin to form. It doesn't matter what they're called. But you'll see as we begin to build through this map how it helps you to understand just what's really important about how we motivate ourselves towards things and away from things. So the neurons communicate, they signal um, messages throughout the brain through using uh, chemical solutions to transmit electrical currents. And you've probably seen on the internet pictures of brains lit up with like lots of uh, electrical pathways. So the model that we're going to use and introduce to you and invite you to think about, it begins with a baby. A baby who is maybe lying in the crib, the pram, the cot, and overhanging is a beautiful, sensory, mobile perhaps. One which, if it was touched, would start a big response, a stimulus response. So you touch, the baby would touch the mobile and maybe there'd be a big, bright, colorful change or a sound or something that would stimulate the baby's senses. So what happens when that happens is the baby's randomly moving and firing off different signals to let the brain learn about moving. Our brains are amazing at learning. We're learning machines. It's all we ever want to do is learn more and connect more of these little pathways. So baby learns that by moving in a certain way, it creates signals that get a nice response. So sooner or later, the baby's brain kind of creates a green flag inside that goes, hmm, if I move here, here, here randomly, I get this really big reward. Now, metaphorically, and that's exactly what we're doing with this, this model, metaphorically, that sets up a little reward signal inside the brain. And because it feels nice, a reward, stimulus response, the brain then begins to go, oh, I, I'm going to remember that. That's a little pathway, a set of movements that is going to bring me that reward. And sooner or later, the baby, through a whole range of uh, abstract and um, uncoordinated movements, begins the process of pruning away all of these extra movements and learns how to very quickly fast track a set of movements to touch on purpose. 
And that's the essence of learning. Once we've learned the difficult, hard way, uh, whether that's riding a bike or driving a car or riding a horse or kicking a ball, we go around these kind of circuitous learning routes until we've got it off to a T and then we know how to do it with precision. So our brains are smart at learning how to make that shortcut. And if the reward is something nice, then the brain has an automatic behavior to go, mm -hmm, I know what to do, get a good result. And exactly the same thing is true when we learn that the result, the response from the outside world, the stimulus response is not so nice. So let's just use an exaggerated example of accidentally coming into contact with something that doesn't feel nice maybe maybe something hot um let's not make it too extreme but something that brain goes uh oh didn't like that at all so baby learns very quickly how to shortcut a movement or a set of movements and get a stimulus response that it's going to go uh-uh don't like that going to remember that bad feeling and keep away from it so now our brains have got the beginning of a mapping system so that we build pat neural pathways of uh, sensory experiences that we don't like and we want to move away from and sensory experiences that we do like and we want to move towards. Now you'll remember from the last video that we had that axis of feelings that we want to get away from and feelings that we want to get towards. Well this is how they're formed inside the brain in our model and but guess what which of those uh, systems do you think the brain prizes more of? Do you think the brain wants to remember the rewards or the things to avoid? And you've probably guessed right, actually, the brain prizes more than anything else what it doesn't like, what it wants to get away from. And that makes kind of really important um, evolutionary survival sense to have a, a brain remember first and foremost the big dangers in the world. What are the things to avoid so that we can survive? And once we've got those uh, out of the way, then we can move towards this business of uh, building lots of rewarding, uh, rewarding behaviors inside the brain. So we have a very simple idea of how we build up a map of the world. Um, we call this a brainscape, our brainscape in Happy Brain. And like all the models you're going to learn within the model of Happy Brain, the only question to ever ask is not if they're right or wrong, but are they useful? And right now, this is going to be a useful way for you to begin to look at the brainscape of your own brain and those of people around you. So your first exercise is going to be to think of your brain as a 3D brain. And here's a, here's a little example of the happy brain 3D brain that it's certainly in the classroom we really like to, to build. And the invitation to you is to, first of all, think about a red flag. So something that you've learned to stay away from. And the red flag represents the feeling that you get when you do X or Y. And equally, we're going to build a green flag, which represents a feeling that you get of reward, again, when you do a certain behavior. And then we've got an orange flag. And the orange flag represents something that you kind of, well, maybe haven't made a decision yet. It's okay, it's fairly neutral. Maybe you like it, maybe you don't. 
And what I'm going to invite you to do in a moment is to press pause on this video so that you can create your own map. You're going to get a, a template for the brainscape that you can print off and print it as large as you like. And I invite you to make some little cocktail stick kind of things um, to make some flags, some flags that are either red or green or orange. And if you're working in a team, in a group, this is a great exercise to kind of create a group brain uh, with lots and lots of flags on. Now remember, there are billions of neural uh, neurons and pathways that are lighting up all the time, all these little signals of communication. We're just exaggerating it, trying to make it super small. There's something else you could do as well, which is if anybody has access to sort of um, football or some other sport flags that go on the floor, you can imagine, can't you, a play mat, which could represent your brain with some flags in it so you could literally stand right inside your brain and when you stand right inside your brain and you realize how you make decisions towards things and away from things you begin to get new insights about the kind of behaviors that until now have held you a bit stuck and the decisions that you can and will make to unstick yourself and of course, ultimately, all of this is about learning how to help others to do the same. So right now, I'm going to ask you to make your own 3D map so that you'll be able to talk to your learning coach, your happy brain coach about and, and show and exchange the, um, the, the content of having been through this process of creating your own 3D map. So press pause now, and then when you come back, we'll be able to build on this 3D map of your brainscape. Welcome back, and I hope by now that you have created your 3D brainscape, one which you're going to be able to share with your group in your Zoominar, and your happy brain coach will be able to draw out a little bit more from you. And once we have this in place, you're going to see that we're going to be able to use it in really fun and unique, playful ways throughout the rest of the program. Remember, we're only just in the introduction part right now just scratching the surface okay so what do you think is the most important thing for a brain many people think it's to survive and actually in a way that's right but somehow there's there's another aspect to our behavior that seems to feel more important than anything else. And that is something that we're going to call familiarity. Our brains like other brains that are similar to ours. And the way that we find out whether brains are similar to ours is we kind of get a feeling about the the electricity and the chemistry that our brains are producing. They are um, they give off sort of very similar electromagnetic fields. I'm going to look at that in more detail soon too. And uh, those of you who already have looked at or read the book will we'll see that there are some cool images of the electromagnetic field that our brains uh, emit. But when we are with somebody who has a similar map of the world to us, who kind of runs similar feelings, emotions, and has similar behaviors, maybe looks similar too, maybe sounds similar, 
maybe there are other sensory experiences that our brains go, oh, you're, you're just like me. We're very similar. Um, it does something really important, which is to help us to feel safer. We feel safer when we're with like-minded people. And by like-minded, we mean similarly patterning brains. So when the patterns are very similar, so maybe the same number of red flags and green flags, maybe, I don't know, you've got 3,000 and or 3 million thousand red flags and 3 million thousand green flags. So we've got a bit of a balance of both, let's just say. Doesn't matter, the pattern does matter. So when the brain, our brains are communicating with brains that are similar, it's so easy. It's like we're just instantly in rapport. And perhaps you can think about people who you've just been in their company and you've just gone, yeah, we're so alike. That's just so cool. I feel like I know you. Well, kind of in a way you do. You know the pattern and that helps us to feel um, comfortable and in rapport with people. Why is this important? This is important when we realize that some decisions we make about who we hang out with, what we do, um, the behaviors we observe in other people, how they kind of make sense at an unconscious level or subconscious level, because that's an important aspect to um, understanding. It's almost like we understand somebody else. And yet we don't really because our brains are uniquely different. But I want you to hold that in your mind as we begin the process of introducing you to the, to the happy brain model. That the first filter your brain is searching for is a brain that is very similar to your own. And we're going to look at that in much more detail as we move through the rest of the introduction to happy brain. And I will be with you again very shortly explaining uh, a few more bits and pieces about how we are forming a model that's going to be useful to you to be able to build your own Thrive Drive and to supercharge the Thrive Drive of others, in particular children and young people, because we're all in the business of driving next generation thinking. So we're all much more resilient, thriving, thinking, feeling, doing on purpose, with purpose, for a purpose. I look forward to speaking and seeing you soon. Take care until then. Bye.